Jason, welcome back to Investor Stream. To start, your announcement highlighted the appointment of Lucid Health Consulting to assist with TRIP's regulatory and reimbursement pathway for its lead drug program, a novel formula for IV-infused psilocybin, or TRP-8803. As a starting point, can you just give us some brief background on the potential solution? Sure, Alex. Uh, thank you. Tryptamine Therapeutics certainly believes that psilocin, which is the active metabolite of psilocybin, is the best-in-class choice for, for patients with neuropsychiatric conditions. The question we have and always had was, how do we deliver or administer such a medicine? There are certainly several drawbacks that come along with using an oral agent like psilocybin, mostly around duration of time taken to reach a psychedelic state, the actual therapy itself, and also the reversibility or, or lack of reversibility in the case of an oral treatment. The benefits that TRIP-8803 or IV-infused psilocin actually have is this time to reach a psychedelic state takes 15 to 20 minutes as compared to one to two hours. So there's certainly an advantage there. The actual duration of therapy itself, the infusion takes between one and two hours. And that's a really significant time advantage when you're looking at eight to 10 hours through an oral version of psilocybin. And the third is the ability to precisely control, measure and reverse the treatment if necessary from an IV perspective. So the patients can feel very much like they're comfortable about the treatment. They know their doctor's actually in control of the therapy. So it makes them more likely to want to try something. Thing is, once you take a tablet, you can't stop it, you can't reverse it. So there's some advantages using a methodology through an IV infusion versus an oral treatment. Thanks, Jason. Now, I noticed that you're a large shareholder in the company and you've continued to increase your holding since you listed. What has the reception been to this? That's a good question. I actually don't know whether that's been a good reception or bad. I, I I guess whenever I invest in anything, it's always because I believe the company has a, a sustainable competitive advantage. I also actually invest in people myself. So if I believe in, in what someone's trying to do and I believe that they have a competitive advantage in, in the future or at the moment with their company or product, then I'm happy to invest in them. It's a little bit harder as a CEO because you want to invest because you believe in what you're doing and you believe in what the company can offer, but you never quite know what investors think of it. But I guess I can honestly say that I have never invested in anything, any company or any product that I didn't believe in, and I didn't believe they would have a sustainable competitive advantage. And I think that goes not just for tryptamine as in terms of investment, it goes into the factors the reason why I joined the company. I see, and I apologize if I blew sky here a little bit, but I, I see that the future of tryptamine therapeutics as being right at the coalface right now in terms of a rediscovered field, which is a psychedelic medication field. And the company has an opportunity to redefine neuropsychiatry as we know it today. And I think that offers something tremendous as being a first mover advantage here in Australia. And I'll certainly be doing everything I can to move towards that vision. And I hope investors will go along with me. Thanks, Jason. Now, what was the company's rationale for entering the strategic partnership with Lucid Health Consulting at this particular stage of TRIP's development pathway? Lucid specialise in assisting their clients to develop an effective and timely pathway for the approval of various medications or devices. So they provide strategic advice with respect to regulatory approval and commercialization that will add value to TRIP. I think if there was one thing that I've learned over 30 years of commercializing pharmaceuticals at J&J &J and Nova Pharmaceuticals is that you need to consider your pathway to registration as a first point. You can't consider it as an appendix or an end stage to whatever you do because it really does direct your ability to bring together the right data that will actually get an approval by a regulatory authority. That doesn't just go for Australia. That also goes for making sure that all the data that you produce and every dollar that you spend of investors' money goes towards clinical trials and data that will actually provide you with an outcome, an endpoint. And that endpoint is very, very critical to think of right at the start of what you do, not just for Australian purposes, but also every piece of data that you generate, you want that to lock into a global regulatory framework. So you can only have to do that data or get that data once. You don't have to go after it and do it again and again and again. You use it as an additive mechanism in order to get approved, not just in Australia, but also registered in overseas markets as well. So the commercialization of psychedelic treatments has been on the radar of investors for some time now. How has research in the field to date informed TRIP's focus to bring more precision to the administering process? 
I think there's no question at all that new treatments in neuropsychiatry are desperately needed and new ways of delivering them. Spending a whole day with a psychedelic and a patient can be a difficult requirement for a therapist, for a psychiatrist, and also for the patient. In terms of an IV infusion, you're offering that surety and that precision for the patient and for the therapist. I think that's very, very important. We desperately need new treatments in Australia. Is there any doubt? Eating disorders, fibromyalgia, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, treatment-resistant depression. I mean, how many people do we think actually that suffer from these kind of conditions believe that they have 100% fixed their issues with the current treatments we have available? Not to say that any treatment provides that kind of cure rate, not at all, but how many people actually are satisfied? And if you look at how many people actually go for treatment that have these kind of conditions, you're looking at less than 50% who make that decision. And of those that do seek treatment, 50% of those will drop out or they'll be left behind in terms of they haven't got the relief they require. So when you think about that 75% of patients that either fail or don't actually seek treatment because they don't believe there's anything good out there for them, you'll understand there's actually a real need for these kind of products to offer new treatment choices for physicians. I guess the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare recently sent out a report regarding use of drugs actually in Australia, and they found that 47% of Australians have illicitly used a drug at some point in their lifetime. And 18% of Australians, that being 3.9 million people, have actually done so in the last 12 months, which is quite an alarming figure. In addition to that, there's 1,693 drug-induced deaths actually recorded in the country in 2022. Importantly, 60% of those actually had opioids in their systems at that point of death. And alarmingly, 29% of those actually had an antidepressant in their system. So anyone can say that we don't need new treatments, but there is not for an instant do I believe that this country is in, in need of uh, new treatments and new treatment options for physicians and for patients with these conditions. And just finally, Jason, what near-term milestones should investors be on the lookout for now that TRIP is accelerating development? Thanks, Alex. Uh, certainly the first thing to watch for is the first patient dosing, a world first with our IV-infused silicin. That will be happening in Adelaide at the end of this month, so keep a watch out for that. In quarter three, we actually have a number of pieces of data that are coming through from our signal studies, which are oral psilocybin studies in the US. The first is that in irritable bowel syndrome, we are working with Harvard University and the University of Massachusetts. We're expecting the first patient to be dosed with oral psilocybin in Q3 of this year. And uh, we also expect to get data from the University of Michigan during quarter three, which is actually the results of some data in a fibromyalgia study that's also coming through in quarter three. So people should watch out for those. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate the update. All the best. Thanks so much, Alex. Appreciate the time.